So, I don't know, I've got my couch here. Oh, and by the way, some of these concepts, or probably all of these concepts, there's nothing original about this. Uh, what I'm trying to do, um, all of these are uh, ideas and methods are drawn from uh, things I've learned from, uh, I mean, a good resource is uh, Track Planning and Realistic Operation by John Armstrong. That's a good resource. And uh, a guy named, a uh, railroader named Dave Barrow has done some articles in model railroading on his domino method of layout design. And so I kind of draw from both. So um, anyway, I've got my couch in here. I've, oh, let's say we have a chair. Put that in there. Another chair. Oh, and let's say we've got the TV here. Put the TV right there. Or the flat panel. Most people have flat panels right nowadays. So, got all those ideas, uh, all those components in there. Now, let's say you're starting out, and most people start out on a 4x8 sheet of plywood. I, that's how I started out. And uh, if you're young and just getting going, more than likely that's what you'll have available to you is a 4x8 sheet of plywood. Um, so, I cut that out. 4x8 uh, based on the grid uh, standards I've laid out and set this in here. Okay, well, see now, now you've got a little bit of a problem here. So, I mean, this is where um, you may have to go to bat uh, with uh, the powers that be. Uh, and uh, there's uh, an old cliche uh, that there's two kinds of space for the model railroader. There's the physical space and then there's the political space. The physical space is whatever space there is available to build something in. The political space is whatever people will allow you to use <laughs> in that, that particular area. So uh, you set this layout in here and boy, you're going to have to do some moving around of items, you know. And this is where you can start thinking things through and just getting a rough idea of where you're going to put it. You know, and uh, you can go uh, to the higher powers in your house, whether it be your parents or, in the case of a, a husband or a wife, go to your spouse and talk about it because you can uh, uh, play around with this, move things around and say, hey, well, if we move this chair over here and move this TV, kind of move this over in the corner here and did this and did this and then, oh, well, and have room for the layout there. Things like that. You can play around with it and negotiate that way. And uh, this method is also helpful for those of you who just like to touch stuff, who like who, who, who like the tactile aspect of it. The one thing about uh, computer-aided design programs is that you lose the tactile el element. You can't touch stuff and move it around. I mean, you have to kind of move it with your mouse. It's kind of different, but uh, this is kind of helpful for your uh, rough planning. Uh, well, so, um, well, let's say, for example, um, a 4x8 sheet isn't going to work, okay? I mean, you, know, you also got to keep in mind, even if you have a 4x8 layout and you have it on legs, uh, you got to keep in mind that even though the layout physically takes up 4x8 feet, you got to keep in mind, you got to have aisle space around this. So a 4 by 8 sheet of plywood on stands is actually going to take more space than just 4 by 8 you know, because you need to have uh, room to get around it. So uh, you probably should leave at least 30 inches all the way around uh, when trying to determine um, how are you going to uh, yeah, how are you going to fit this in in your available space? Now, of course, one uh, thing you could do is put uh, the layout on casters and just kind of roll it into the corner for storage and just pull it out and maybe shove some things out of the way um, when you're going to work on it. Uh, another method, uh, another way you could go with this is rather than go with an entire uh, 4x8 sheet of plywood, and this uh, is a situation which may work better um, if you live in an apartment. Um, uh, I know uh, folks over in Europe and in uh, Asia um, don't uh, normally, by default, live in their own home. Um, a lot more expensive over there, so uh, folks live in apartments uh, um, elsewhere in the world. So, uh, actually, 13 by 17 room is probably quite generous. I mean, I don't know. I'm making some assumptions here about my viewership. So, one thing you may want to do is go uh, for a shelf layout. So um, I just took my um, little old layout here and uh, split it into two sections. So now you can play with this.
have a shelf layout two feet wide by two feet wide obviously it kind of constrains you on what you can do I mean maybe you have a switching layout or maybe you can somehow figure out to extend this out so you can uh, create a dog bone kind of layout um, so it would actually end up being a bit more than a square footage come out to be a 4 by 8 sheet of plywood a bit bigger uh, but uh, the advantage of using a shelf out uh, shelf layout the advantage of that is it's quote unquote it's out of the way you don't need to pull it out okay uh, you don't need to move anything else around in the room uh, to get that kind of a layout to fit. It's on, it's up against the wall, and uh, it's just basically out of the way. So that may be a bit more appealing to uh, the folks who um, you live with. Um, so, and especially it could be really appealing if you can uh, uh, do it in a way where you can mount the shelf layout to the wall. You know, so uh, you don't have any legs underneath it. So you have a lot of storage space underneath there for, you know, stuff like bookshelves. Oh, you can make that pitch too, can't you? Say, oh yeah, you can store stuff underneath there. So this is probably an easier sell um, uh, to your uh, uh, the folks you're negotiating with. And uh, no, of course, you got to keep in mind that if you have windows there, you may need to oh shift things around um, or maybe you're not going to be able to because of a window not going to be able to attach it to the wall or maybe one arm of the layout needs to have legs and the other one can do without it depends upon the geometry of the room and what you have to work with and this is kind of the fun part of model railroading is the planning you know the strategic planning of everything the planning around obstacles whether they're physical obstacles like in a basement uh, where you have the heating uh, and cooling area and the water heater where they're not really movable so you have to plan around that or whether you have to build your layout in a family room like I had to uh, so uh, anyway this is this is kind of the fun part Well, that's all I've got to say at the moment about this aspect of uh, designing. This is just essentially for really, really rough um, pre-planning. And so uh, for my next uh, part of the series, I'm going to show, um, uh, show you some computer aided design, how that can uh, help you with uh, taking the next step in uh, designing your dream layout. And... Uh, I'll talk about, uh, I do my work on CAD Rail, and that's a, a very good program. There's, there's other programs out here that uh, are good too, but that's the, the one I'm used to working with. So um, anyway, uh, that's it for now. If you have any uh, more questions or need me to clarify, um, you know how to get to me on YouTube. So uh, anyway, that's it for now.